Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. This morning, well, I'm fueling up on some Joe. Can't do without it early in the morning. Now, I'm going to say this. It's chilly this morning. It's around 48 degrees. That's chilly for me. And the surface temperature is probably around 56 degrees right now. We've encountered some cold weather. And that's a good thing. The bite is on. We're going to go crappie fishing. And we're going to have fun doing it. Woo! Is that not a beautiful sight right there? Sun coming over the top of that mountain. There's just a little area right out in front of us that normally will hold a couple crappie. And all it is is a sandbar that drops off. And it's a slow tapering drop off. Um, the sandbar is real shallow. And it comes out a piece and then it gradually falls down into around eight feet of water. So I'm gonna start off with a Canyon Creek Super Ultralight Rod. One of my favorites, it's Limber, I'm talking about. Limber's a dish rag, look at there. Absolutely no backbone. Using two pound test, high vis vicious. Now, on two-pound test line, I'm a loop knot son of a gun uh, in all my jigs. But on two-pound test line, the reason I, I tie a Palomar uh, or Trilene knot is to get as much strength as I can out of this line. I always keep this drag real light, just enough to set the hook. Just enough to set the hook. Now, this reel right here is amongst my favorite. When it comes to two pound test line, it's a Fago LT1000. It's a Daiwa reel. Um, let's just go to fishing. Let's make a cast out here on the end of this bar and see if we can catch us a couple crappie. There's a fish. That's a crappie. I'll be doggone. We did catch one. We broke the ice, folks. Looks like a little black crappie. Let's see what we got right here. Yep. There we go. We broke the ice. Little black crappie. You know, I've been catching a lot of fish on the crappie magnet. It's an old... Oh, <laughs> I don't know how old they are. They're old. But they will catch fish at times. Now, I'm not doing anything except for just a steady retrieve. And every once in a while, I'll let it fall a few inches, and then I'll steady retrieve it like that and let it fall a few inches. That's what I'm doing. The last two fish that I've caught, that's what I've had to do to get a response. There's one. That ain't a bad fish either. That ain't a bad one, folks. I like them this size right here to eat. Actually, it's a good crappie. I don't like them too big to eat myself. I'm gonna go ahead and man, let's try to, there he is. Now that is a healthy crappie. Look how fat and girthy that fish is. Golly. Uh, they going to be some good crappie caught this winter. I want to show y'all something right here that's extremely important. And I've mentioned it before, but I don't know if I... I can't remember if I went into detail or not. Because I say so much. <laughs> y'all know how I am. I say so much. But here's the jig i'm going to show it to you and i want you to notice this really look notice how that hook the top of the hook all right there's your point the top of the hook is in line with the eyelet just about all these jig head hooks are like that that's not good that's not good at all what happens 
right there, it causes you to lose fish. And there's no reason to lose fish. When you get bit, when a fish inhales this jig, okay, there's no reason not to hook him. Now I lose very few, and I'm gonna show you how. What I do, what I do is I'll take, and you don't have to do it much, just a little bit. Open that gap up. Now if you notice, it's at a slight angle, and the point is pointing over the top of that island. What that does when that fish inhales that bait, and it don't matter if I'm fishing with a swim bait for bass, using a lot bigger jig head, or for crappie, or for bluegill. And it don't matter, in this case, this is a size six hook. Um, it don't matter if it's an eight, or a size one, or one alt, it don't matter. And it don't matter what species you're fishing for. But if you'll open that hook up a little bit, the where it's planing above that islet, you'll catch might near every fish it bites. The reason is, is because if I were to leave it uh, just like it was, what happens is that fish will inhale it. And when I go to set the hook, the islet will interfere from that hook sticking that fish immediately. It will slide through his mouth, he'll blow it out. He'll feel that pressure, he'll blow it out. But now when he bites it, that hook point is up and it's gonna penetrate exactly where that jig is in his mouth. That point is gonna penetrate. Now that is very, very important. Um, it's so important, it, it's just, it determines whether you're gonna lose that fish or catch him. I just wanted to point that out. These fish are real close to the surface. I'm out here in about three feet of water right now. They're about halfway, about a foot and a half deep. There we go. I'm gonna have to quit that. That's from years and years of driving nails. I'm setting the hook way too hard. Today I am. Normally I can control that. That fish is pulling. They will if you let them, but if you get a crappie, if you try to railroad, <laughs> that's a good one right there. If you get one to the top of the water, they just, they just, it, it just ain't no fun to me. But that's a good fish right there. Nothing wrong with that. Now, he cut his fin right there. That's cause he hopped over my line. When he spun back around, there was pressure. Had him hooked right here. The line come around and cut right between his fins right there. Let's put him in the bucket. I don't want to get slime all over my lunch, but yeah, I'm having fun. I'd probably spruce it up and get some of that crappie slime on there. I don't, like I said, I never ever try to fill a crappie. I'm a lime watcher. That's the reason for this high-vis line that I use especially when I'm jig fishing. But now I feel the bite, I feel the thump, but I'm mainly watching the line. There we go. I didn't miss that one. I've missed two or three right here, folks. I don't know why. They're just starting to hit a little bit short. Yeah, that one's barely got that jig in his mouth. Looky there. I barely got him hooked. Let's see if we can flip him. Boy, that's a good eating size. Hey, am I going to lose him or what? <laughs> Quit. Barely got him. See, they were eating it like that. Now they're just kind of nipping at it. I may keep throwing that jig. I don't know, but... I may downsize, when they start that, I'll downsize to a little bitty jig and catch more fish. And that's just all they are to it, to, be, to put it simple. 
nothing technical about that to catch more fish but the advantage of light line like this this two pound test line and a long flimsy rod you can get an incredibly long cast and in shallow water that's a must folks it really is you're you're covering a lot of territory on a long cast for one thing and you're getting that bait away from the boat but everybody has their own ways it's just that thin water like this you do have to be quiet and make those long casts like that one right there that two pound test line to come off that spool like nobody's business just steady steady maybe let it fall a little bit and then pick it back up and steady for a little bit that's how they're hitting it the main thing about a jig is i'm gonna tell you folks <laughs> make it alive it's not real so <laughs> make it look alive mm. do that again they did Golly, I don't need to be jerking that hard. Got excited. <laughs> it's easy, easy for me to get excited. There's a keeper. Got him in the bottom of the lip. Ain't that funny? That's not, that normally don't happen. Let's put him in the bucket. Back in my day, we'd get one pair of Brogan boots and had to last a whole year. And we'd have to, our clothes was made out of granite sacks and toe sacks, shirts, pants, everything. All right, folks, there's our catch right there, a limit of crappie. And there's a few good ones in here. Here's a pretty good one right here. I've got, well, several, several that size in there, but, yep, yeah, I got a lot of fish cleaning to do now. I would rather catch a lemon of crappie and uh, show a few of them and not have to clean them, but now y'all know for a fact that if you're not good to your woman, your woman will not. I'm gonna stress that. Will not be good to you. Okay. Well, the folks had another blessed day on the water. They ain't no doubt about that. Hey, I got a lot of fish to clean. We need to get home and get that done. And I wanna say, God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Hey. Oh, good. Remember, go fishing when you can, but I call it good for you.